to God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Can you hear me? You can't hear me? Yeah. All right, well, we'll try it again. <laughs> Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of God to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him great glory, great things he hath done. Gene, can you put this over at the piano spot in the spots? Put this mic in the spots right here. Put this mic in the spots if you would. Let's try it again. The last, last verse. Great things he had told us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder from Jesus the pardon received. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Let's sing a couple verses of Amazing Grace while we're here. 165, if you want to take a hymn book. We'll sing first, first and last verse of Amazing Grace. 165, first and last verse of Amazing Grace. Indeed. God, praise 
praise God, 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 praise God. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Well, good evening. How many of you is glad for the grace of God tonight? Amen. Thank God for His grace and thank Him uh, for the opportunity tonight to be back into His house. It's good to see everyone here tonight. We just want to give God praise for what God's doing in our lives and the opportunities God has given us every single day to see His grace and His mercy and to know that He's alive and well. How many of you believe tonight He's alive and well? Amen. I'm glad we can trust Him, and uh, just want to give God thanksgiving for all that God is doing. So thank you so much uh, for being here on this wonderful uh, Wednesday evening as we come to celebrate uh, the Lord and come to hear what God has to say to us tonight. And my prayer is that God will encourage you through the Word of God uh, and just speak to your heart and speak to us together as a uh, church, uh, as believers tonight, that God will uh, just lead us and guide us. And so I want to ask you to please pray for all of our classes going on uh, from our nursery all the way through our youth and uh, just pray that God will uh, bless every need and touch every heart, and uh, we just want to praise Him for what He's doing and give God uh, thanksgiving. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to Daniel, Daniel chapter number 12 tonight as we ask the Lord uh, to speak to our heart uh, in the book of Daniel. We want to thank God for what God is doing uh, tonight in our lives. I want to ask you to be, please be praying for uh, Brother Darren Peterson. Uh, his mother passed away. Uh, and that funeral is going to be tomorrow at uh, uh, down in Taylorsville at the Alexander Funeral Home. So please remember uh, that family in prayer that God will lift them up and just meet their needs. Uh, also, uh, we are uh, uh, trying to help uh, Mary Taylor and Bill. Uh, Mary is in uh, very, uh, she's in very bad shape. Uh, she uh, cannot get out of the bed. Uh, she's, she's had a rough, uh, she's having a very rough time. And uh, uh, so if you would like, we've started a new thing about providing meals for them one time a day. Uh, so if you would like to be part of that and don't, if you have a computer, uh, you can jump on our uh, Facebook page and just hit the link and sign up for it. Uh, if not, if you will see Debbie Eckerd, uh, she can get you signed up uh, and tell you what dates are available just to take them a meal, try to be a blessing to them. Uh, Mary has always, uh, uh, I don't know of anybody in the church that has children and she hadn't touched them. Right? She's always been uh, been there to be with the uh, children, encouraging them, and uh, just a great servant of the Lord. So we want to pray for her that God will bring the healing she needs and the strength she needs. So please remember her in prayer. And uh, also remember uh, Ethel Arney in prayer. Continue to pray for her that God will lift her up. Uh, she is there at hospice in Hudson. So uh, pray the Lord just surround her in a special way and just meet her needs. Uh, and God just uh, be with her and, uh, and lift her up as only He can do. I'm glad today to know we can trust in the Lord. Amen. Uh, to know that he knows exactly what we need tonight, and we just want to praise him. And uh, also want to uh, ask you to be much in prayer uh, for uh, the Awana program that's beginning on September the... 13th uh, here at the church. It'll be every Wednesday night. Uh, it is a uh, an opportunity to help uh, teach kids how to uh, know the Bible, teaching them uh, scripture memorization. Uh, it is uh, it is an awesome opportunity uh, and a program that we have. So uh, please remember that in prayer. I'll be inviting uh, all the school age kids that you know, uh, and uh, we, we'll be uh, praying for that. And in praying for that, uh, we need uh, we're going to need some people to help in that. I know they've already signed up people, but uh, we're, we're going to need more people as uh, as it grows so please pray for that opportunity we have to touch their lives uh and in doing that also uh we need we need some more van drivers especially on wednesday night uh our van drivers are driving about an hour close to an hour and a half one way on wednesdays picking up people y'all are excited about that ain't you so we need we need some help in that area. If we can get another van on the road, it would help. Uh, it will help with that greatly. Uh, so uh, uh, be a be a blessing. We're also having uh, our vans are full, and sometimes they have to come uh, let some out and go back and get more. So uh, uh, pray for that. It's a blessing. Amen. 
That's a wonderful blessing, a wonderful uh, to have that opportunity. And uh, so let's be praying for that. God will use uh, use us as a church to be a blessing to, uh, to, to these that we are picking up. And thank God for what he's doing through that ministry. And uh, let's continue to pray for it. Uh, God will bless it. Uh, I want to tell you this past Saturday, uh, we did a, uh, uh, we had a uh, back to school clothes uh, giveaway for, uh, uh, for kids, school age kids. Uh, they quit counting at 415. They quit counting. That way when they, at, when they just got to the point they couldn't count anymore and uh, quit counting. They served over 415 school age people here uh, on Saturday. So uh, uh, what a blessing. Amen. And thank God for that opportunity. Uh, let's continue to pray that God will help us to uh, have His His desire, His vision uh, for uh, reaching people and being part of their lives. So uh, let's continue continue to pray for that. Uh, we won't go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And just ask the Lord's will to be done. And uh, if you have a uh, special need or object, we're going to have a time of prayer uh, at the end of service tonight in closing and just uh, ask God's will to be done. Lord, just to uh, speak to us in a special way uh, and uh, ask Him to uh, help us to live for Him. So let's pray together. And ask God to open our heart to the Word of God. Father, we just want to thank you for who you are. God, thank you for the opportunity you give us tonight, God, just to be able to come into your house, Lord. God, we are so blessed. And I want to praise you, God, for what you're doing right now in our lives. God, just thank you, uh, Father, that we can trust in you. Thank you for the freedom we have, God, in our country to be able to worship you. But God, most of all, thank you for the freedom we have in our heart, God, being, uh, Lord, that you have set us free. Lord, I want to praise you for that, God. I praise you for the desire to come to your house tonight. God, we just open our hearts right now and ask you to speak to us. God, help us, Lord, that we would grow in your grace and in your knowledge, God, and we would allow you, uh, Lord, to work in and through us. Father, we want to hear what you want to say to us tonight. I know you have a word for us, Father. God, I want to praise you uh, for that word. And God, I ask you to bless every teacher tonight. God, bless them from our nursery all the way through our youth, God, and the other uh, classes and ministries that are going on tonight. God, you just anoint them. Uh, God, bless them. And Lord, I pray you bless everyone uh, that is a part of what you are doing. And God, I pray you would help us to hear your voice. And Lord, uh, we just want to ask you, God, all over our community, God, you bless our churches. God, I pray, Lord, that through this county, God, around our country, Lord, that you know, God, uh, Lord, that we need to shine as a light in a dark world. And Father, I pray that we would, uh, and also doing that, God, that we would bless our missionaries, Lord, that are serving here and around the world, God. Thank you for what you're doing through the church, God. And I pray, uh, Lord, that our community, God, would know you. And Lord, that they would be saved. And Lord, uh, together, we would reach those right here in our lives. Lord, thank you tonight for the Word of God. Thank you for the opportunity opportunities you give us every single day and to know your hand to know your grace and to know your promises of the word and i ask you to lead us and guide us father in jesus name amen amen praise the lord how many of you glad tonight for the word of god amen Thank God for the privilege to pray and to know Him and to know that God knows exactly how, what we need tonight. And uh, we just want to give God thanksgiving and give Him glory. We're going to be looking tonight in Daniel chapter number 12, uh, the last chapter in the book of Daniel. Uh, and we have uh, watched some amazing things take place uh, in, in the book of Daniel. We've seen uh, some prayers that have been answered. We've watched miracles take place. Uh, not only Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We saw it also uh, with Daniel himself. Uh, so we watched God move uh, in the life of Daniel and through Daniel's he is blessed of uh, the kingdom through Daniel himself and so we see a lot of things that are going on around Daniel's life when we looked in chapter number 10 the last time we looked at the prayer that uh, Daniel's praying there uh, and we understand something about Daniel he is uh, he, he teaches us about the spiritual warfare of prayer of going to pray and trusting God right where you are and knowing that God is able to meet every need and so now we understand and as we come to chapter number 12, we're looking at every prayer in the Bible. This is number 199, just in case you're keeping up with it. I think whenever we get to 200, we ought to just celebrate. What y'all think? Uh, I really, I wish I would have wrote down how long it's been, so we've, we've been looking at all these, but I really have absolutely no idea. Some of you may say it has been years and years and years and years. I don't know how long it's been. But I do know this, we should understand that the most important thing you and I have as a believer is the opportunity to pray. Amen? 
is to go before God and to trust God right where you are. And so we're going to see some things tonight in Daniel. Daniel is a man with a desire to see God work in the life of his people again. When you come to number chapter number 12, it's a place where you understand that Daniel also has a desire and a longing to live for God no matter what. No matter if he is doing it by himself, if he is the only one, Daniel is still going to stay true and walk with God and serve God and be faithful to God. Matter of fact, I've understood from chapter number 10 and some other things that Daniel prayed that Daniel's going to stay faithful to God even if he does not have all of the answer. Amen? Sometimes we put conditions on serving the Lord, don't we? Anybody else in here do that? Well, like, well God, if you'll do this for me, then I'll do that for you. Anybody ever done that before? Would you just raise your hand? Oh, yeah, just let, let you know we're, we're human. Here, Daniel, he is, he is one of these that he is trusting God no matter what happens in his life. So Daniel stood and believed, but I think Daniel, because Daniel believed, then he could stand and he could trust God where he was. And so you watch him. No, no one could have ever determined everything that God was going to do for Daniel, but even greater the things that God was going to tell Daniel. There's things revealed to Daniel in the Word of God. Uh, that is nowhere found nowhere else in the Bible and have come true in a uh, sum of our lifetimes. And so you uh, you watch Daniel as God uh, begins to bless him and pour through him uh, so that we can see some things about who God is. So God gave him a timeline of events uh, that were to come and those things are uh, coming to pass. So Daniel's prayer life is evident by the actions of God in Daniel's life and it's also evident by the hand of God upon uh, Daniel life. Daniel would have been uh, one that he would have never, uh, even if he had never opened his windows and they could have seen Daniel pray. If Daniel would have never uh, been in a public place whenever he prayed or called upon God, uh, they could have still understood that there's something going on with this man. And when you begin to look at his life, you would see that it is a relationship with God. It is spending time with God. It is praying. It is knowing Him. And if there's anything tonight that is missing, I feel like, in our personal lives, in our church lives is spending time with God. That is the place that we are refueled. That is the place that we are refired. That is the place that God brings alive the Word of God in us by the power of the Holy Spirit in that time of prayer in His presence. So Daniel, we understand something about Daniel. Daniel wanted to see everything that God was going to do. So when you come to verse number 8, look at it with me. Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 8. Listen to what Daniel says. He said, And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh, my Lord. That's the place of prayer. That's a place of communication. Uh, just like Adam. We go back to the prayer of Adam. It was Adam walking with God in the cool of the day. You understand? Adam had a conversation with God. When you pray, when we pray, we are having a conversation with God. We are talking to God. That's what Daniel's doing uh, here in verse number 8. The Bible said, he said, What shall be the end of these things? As a matter of fact, when you go through this whole chapter, this is the only place where Daniel is talking. Daniel is hearing from God. He is hearing what God has to say to him, what God is giving him for his life. So I want you to back up with me, if you will, to verse number 1. And you see something about Daniel as we understand the Daniel, Daniel's prayer right here. It is a prayer for light at the end. Daniel is trusting God uh, to give him the light, to show him some light, to show something upon his life to give him some understanding from verse at number eight matter of fact let me just ask a question right quick just to make sure how that blood is flowing through all of our veins has have anybody ever went through anything that you did not understand if you have would you raise your hand Wow, Daniel's in that same place. He is. He has heard a prophecy. He is. He's trying to figure. Hey, I want to tell you something. Then, when we don't understand, the greatest thing you and I can do is to continue to give our life to God, believe by faith that God knows exactly where we are, continue to live by faith in the Word of God, and allow God to do what needs to be done in our life. So, here in verse number one, down to verse number three, we understand something about the end. 
Daniel, not only is this the end of uh, this little book of Daniel, but Daniel's talking about the end of life, and he's talking about the end of time itself. And so it says in verse number 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, uh, the great prince uh, which stood uh, standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as it never was since uh, there was a, was a nation, even to that same time. He said, And at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the what written in the book so you understand in these first uh, three verses of scripture we're going to look at he is talking about the end of time he's talking about a time when time is going to end when this world is going to be over i want to remind you about something today that is going to happen and Daniel hearing from God, Daniel understanding, wow, all these prophecies that God has spoken to Daniel, that time is going to end. That there's going to be that place where it's all going to be over. And friend, you and I, our responsibility in that, number one, is to be ready because it's going to happen. Amen? And the second responsibility we have in that is to help others to get ready. And so Daniel, he wants to hear from God. He wants to know what God is saying. So Daniel wanted to see and to know the end of all things, as he says in verse number 8. He asked God to show him the end. We go back to verse number 1. You understand that Michael, how the Bible talks about Michael, he is the what in the Bible? What is Michael in the Bible? He's the archangel. Michael, we, we understand there's Gabriel who speaks. There's Michael who is also an, an archangel uh, for a nation as we've seen right here. So he is the angel uh, that stands for the people. He is that guardian angel for uh, the nation, if you will. And you watch as Michael the archangel, he has come. He is speaking here to Daniel. It is time he shall stand. Here's what's going to happen. And so he begins to unveil to us some prophecies that you read about in Ezekiel. Some prophecies you read about as you go into the book of Revelation. And so Daniel himself is hearing from God about some things that are going to be taking place. He said there's going to be a time of trouble upon this earth like it's never been before. Now you think about that for just a minute because when you go with me, if you will, all the way back in the book of Genesis, there was a man who built a boat. Anybody know what his name was? Noah. Somebody, uh, when you think about Noah and you go back to, uh, to, the, to the Scripture there in the book of Genesis, the Bible said they were wicked in their heart. Matter of fact, they were so wicked in their life that every imagination that they had was wicked. Everything they did was wicked. But Noah found what in the eyes of the Lord? He found grace. God raised up Noah. Uh, but what about those people? That was a time of wrath. That's the flood that happened. But I want to tell you what, as hard as that is and as unimaginable in our uh, mind's eyes it could be, it is nothing like it's going to happen in the time of tribulation. He says, I want to let you know it's a time like it's never been upon this earth. The end is coming, Daniel. And that is what God has begun to re unveil before Daniel. Those seven years of, of tribulation, those three and a half of great uh, tribulations upon uh, this earth. It's a time like never before. He said, at that time, thy people, my people, they're going to be delivered. I want to let you know something today. Hallelujah for deliverance. Amen. I know that things can get bad. I know our lives, personally, there's things can happen in our life that is bad. But I'll let you know something. Glory to God, Jesus is the deliverer. Amen? And He's able to deliver us. And He said, Daniel, I'm going to let you know something about where you are and about what is going to happen. I am going to deliver my people. Glory to God, that's why every single day we can live with expectation. <laughs> and He's coming, amen? Oh, that he is, he, is, he is on His way, that He is here uh, to save us. The Bible talks about that. Uh, when you go to Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 21, He talks about that time of the great tribulation here upon this earth. So here's what He said. I love verse number 1 uh, because He lets us know. He said, I want you to know that every one that shall be found written in the book. He said, every single... Did you know something? God is not going to leave any of his children out <laughs> every single one that is written in that book what's that book he's talking about preacher he talks about it as you go over into revelation chapter number 21 and verse number 27 where he said i'll let you know their names are written in that lamb's book of life their name is written as a child of god they will be delivered they're not going to be left behind they are not going to be in an eternal fire they are going to be delivered by the way i just want to let you know something he is going to catch us away 
Would it not, is it not going to be awesome to be thinking about one of these days you can be, we could be sitting here in church and all of a sudden we'd be gone. I like to say hallelujah, amen. Driving down the road, you're going to be gone. Hey, east sky bound, brother, with a hammer down, amen. You think about, we're going to leave this world. He's going to come to take us home. And so verse number 1 lets us know. He said, Daniel, I'll let you know something. All these you're praying for, all these in captivity, because you've got to remember, they are in captivity. And they are in that place where they're, it's like they're living under the cloud of all the judgment of generations that has been before them. And now they're in this captivity because of, of all those sins, because of their hearts being hardened against God, because they refused to repent. But he said, I want to let you know, every single one that is mine, they are all going to be delivered. And glory to God, I'm going to bring them home. I'm going to safely take them home. Verse number 2 says, and many of them that sleep in the dust to the earth, they're going to awake. He said, I'll let you know, there's going to be a resurrection. He said, I'm going to, I love how he explains it when you get over in the book of Thessalonians. He said, I'm going to blow the trumpet and praise God. They're going to, the, the graves are going to bust open. Amen. He puts it like this in the book of Ezekiel. I like this part. He said, there's bones everywhere, but God's going to pull them together. We're going to have a glorified body one day. Hey, he is good. Amen. God said, I want to let you know something, the end. He's talking about the end, that end time. Not just the end of our life, but the end time when God uh, settles everything, that final judgment day, uh, when he's, as he says in the book of Reve Revelation 20 and verse number 12, uh, where he said that every single living person, every single person that has died from them, everybody is going to stand before God. He said, I'm going to call them out of the sea. I'm going to call them out of the dust of the earth. I'm going to call them out of the graves. Every, they're all, everybody is going to stand before God. He said, those who do not know Jesus are going to stand before the white throne judgment. That means that is a place where there's no mercy. That is a place where there's no grace. That is a place where it's all over because they have rejected Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of their life. We'll stand before that white throne judgment. But I want to tell you, in the end, we also are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. If you know Jesus is Savior and Lord, the Bible tells us in the book of Corinthians, we're going to stand. We're going to give an account of our life. Where, what have we done? Where, what have we done with the, the life that God gave us? Because He gave us abundant life. Amen? And so you watch as this begins to unfold to, uh, to Daniel. And, and he says there in verse number 2, he says, Some are going to everlasting life. Some are going to eternal life. And some are going to an eternal damnation. As he says there in verse number 2, he said they're going to shame and everlasting contempt. He said that they will never, ever be changed. It's a place of finality uh, that he's talking about to Daniel. Verse uh, number 3, he lets us know, he said, And they uh, that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. He said, I want to let you know something about those who know, who are wise. That word wise, it means those who have feared the Lord, those who are following the commandments of God, those who are walking in God's way. He said, I want to let you know something about them. They are shining bright. Wow. When you get over in the book of Matthew chapter number 5, Jesus happens to be talking to, we, we call it the Beatitudes, we call it the Sermon on the Mount. He, he, is, he, he is given His word and He said, here's what you are. He said, ye are the light of the world. You know what? He goes back, all the way back to Daniel. Daniel said, hey, those who are wise, they're the ones who are bright as the firm. They're as bright as the sun itself. You are shining light, shining your light. He said in Matthew 5, verse number 16, he said, hey, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He said, look, I want to let you know something. He said, Daniel, those who are wise, those who are following me, they are going to shine. And here's what they're going to do. Look at verse number 3. And I want to tell you, this is why it is so important for me and you, if you are a believer to to be consistent with God, how to walk with Him daily, and to let the light shine. Here's what He said will happen. He said, And they that turn, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. He said, I want to tell you something. You're not shining in vain. Did you know you're not living your Christian life in vain? The Bible says it like this. You go over in the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter number 15, verse number 58. He said, I want you, he said, therefore, brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, he said, I want to let you know something about your life. What you are doing, applying yourself every single day, following Jesus every day, being, being that consistent witness every single day, right where you are, whether it's on your job, in your home, whatever you are doing, walking down the street, wherever you are, you are shining as a bright light. 
God. And you are able to help those who don't know Him to see that, yes, Jesus is real. Look at this person's life. And so you watch that as he begins to reassure Daniel. He said, I want to let you know something. Those who are righteous, those who are wise, they're going to be shining in that dark time. Hey, church, I want to tell you what, it's time for us to rise and shine. Amen. And let God shine through us to a world that has absolutely no hope. That they will turn others because... The end is near because they understand the hope they have. Look in verse number 4. I love verse number 4. He said, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words. He said, And seal up of the book. He said, And even to the time of the end. And then he said, Many run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Wow. He said, Daniel, I want to tell you, knowledge is the end. But also, Daniel, he said, There's that place of enlightenment. I've enlightened you to what is going on. I've given you... He gave Daniel specific times. I know we haven't went through all that because we we're looking at the prayer of Daniel. But he gave Daniel some time lines in, uh, in these prophecies. And, and so Daniel's in that place of, God, would you continue to reveal it to me? Show me what you are doing. He said, Daniel, the things I've told you are sealed up in the book. They are, they are closed. They are, they are closed in that book. But I want to tell you something about Daniel also. Daniel's in that place that where, where it says, shut up thy words. It means to seal up what has been said, to know that it is, it is a final authority. It means that, yes, it is true. Seal it up in the book, it simply means not to seal it up where no one else knows, but it means to seal it up because this is the truth. It, it needs no further explanation. This is what God said. Now, let's let you all know something today. We have that same day, thing today. Amen? You, if you got the Word of God, you got what God said. It's a sealed book. Uh, by, matter of fact, it goes as far to say in the book of Revelation, there don't need to be anything added to it. There don't need to be anything taken away from it. Matter of fact, if you do, all the plagues you've ever read in the book will be, will be added to you. Wow. He said, hey, you got the word. Can I just let y'all in on a little something around where we live? It's not that people don't know a lot of times. It's that they don't do. I remember what I'm talking about. Start talking about something about Jesus. Man, they, are, they know all about Jesus. Start talking to them about living right. Yep, they know all about that. But they just don't do it. And Daniel, he said, Daniel, you have the Word. You, you have this sealed Word. Oh, and matter of fact, whenever you read that, uh, verse number 4, you understand that this is an answer to Daniel's prayer. When you go back to chapter number 10, Daniel is praying, God, I want to know some stuff. God, I want you to speak to me. God, I want you to give me an answer. The Bible says for 21 days his prayer was hindered. We looked at all that, uh, talking about the spiritual warfare and prayer. And now in verse uh, number 4, you understand that God had revealed this to Daniel and said, Hey, here is what you are longing for. Here is what you are hunting for for your life. Here is the word that you need for that assurance in your heart. And so he gives him the word of God and he said, I want you to keep it until the end, the end time of things that are happening. The Bible says it like this in Isaiah 8 and verse number 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. We have the answer. Church, I want to tell you something today. We have the answer. We got the answer that the world needs. Do y'all agree with that? He says, oh, he has sealed it up in his life. And here's what he says about that in verse, in verse number 4. He said, I want to let you know something. They're going to be running to and fro. We have never had a day on the face of this earth that, that is like today when people are trying to satisfy every longing they have running to and fro. Would y'all agree with that? And he said, and he said, I want to let you know something. Knowledge will increase. And I understand there's, there's all kind of prophecies that come, can come out of these and all kind of words and interpretation that can come out of this one verse. But as you look at it, he's talking about the shape that the world is going to be in when all these things begin to come to pass and the end is near. He said, I want to let you know the knowledge is going to increase. Can I just let, y'all know something that people are smarter than they have ever been. Y'all know that? This is just personal opinion, but I think they're dumber than they've ever been. We got all this knowledge, but people don't know how to do it. Y'all know what I mean? We know about things. He said, look, it's, the knowledge is going to increase. People are going to get wiser. Whenever I was a young, uh, young boy growing up, I remember preachers talking about uh, there'll be a day when people are going to be weaker and wiser. Y'all remember that? He said, look, I'll let you know, here's what's going to happen. 
It's going, they're just going to become wiser. The Bible talks about it like this when you get over in the book of uh, Romans chapter number 1 and verse number 21 and verse number 22 where he said they're, they're going to be get, get in that place where they, all they want to do is learn. He said they're going to be professing themselves wise as what the Bible says in Romans 1 and verse number 22. Hey, but they have become fools. They forgot to trust God. He says, Daniel, I'll let you know something. Seal up what you know. Have that. Uh, let them know what you have. Hey, you have a word from God. He said, these things are going to be taking place. So he said, Daniel, you have been enlightened. But I'll let you know something. When you come to verse number 5 down through verse number 7, he, he begins to talk about an eternal work. He, uh, we, I love uh, reading these scriptures because we know uh, that in the last day, he's talking about Michael the archangel. But I'll let you know uh, in a little something. There's times that Jesus has just been showing up in the book of Daniel. He showed up in a fire one day. Amen. How many of you know he'll walk with you through the fire? He, uh, he, was, uh, he was down uh, in, in the den of lions. He sent some angels to make sure everything. He said, just take care of you, Daniel. When you read some of the prophecy what we found in chapter number 10, yep, he was, he was, seeing, he was seeing who Jesus is. He was, he was in, that, in that time of three weeks of praying and fasting before God, and God allowed him to be in the presence of the Holy One. And you come to chapter number 12, you understand something else. The Bible says here in verse number 5, then how look, and you go reading about who Daniel saw in these scriptures from verse number 5 down through verse number 7. There's some angels on this side. There's one in the middle that everybody is looking looking to and he said I'll let you know I swear uh, by heaven itself I, I establish everything that is going on uh, by the power uh, of who the father is uh, in heaven he says it like this in verse number uh, verse number five he says this eternal work Daniel sees two angels one on each side of the rig river we understand this is the Tigris River that we have uh, talked about and, and, and followed through uh, scriptures but here it is and the Bible said there's an angel on each side of the river the angels are wondering also, when is this going to be fulfilled? I love how Jesus lets us know something about time itself. He lets us know that, he, that, that time, that the end of time is in the hand of the Father. The angels don't know about it. Heaven don't know about it. It's just going to happen one day. But I want to assure you about something. It is going to happen one day. He said, look, I want to let you know this is going to take place. So the angels also, look in verse number 7 with me. He said, I heard of the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, which he held up his right hand and up his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times and a half. Wow. There are some interpretations of what is being said, but he said, I want to let you know something. This is going to be, it, here, here's the times that things are going to take place. And he begins to unveil that to Daniel in these scriptures. This is what he said in verse number 7. He said, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be, what? Finished. He said, we're going to, that'll be the end of the time. And so when you understand what is going on, there is a, uh, there is a place uh, that Daniel is seeing out of the things that's going to take place at the end of time. And he says, I want to let you know this is going to happen. Here's what Jesus said, Matthew 24 and verse number 36. But of that day and, and, and hour knoweth no man, no, not, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And so you understand as this angel or this appearance of, of the Savior himself in verse number 7. He said, I'll let you know. He said, it is, it is, I swear by him that liveth forever. You watch that happen as you go in the New Testament also where he says, hey, it is in my Father's hand. You know and you understand that God, hey, it's an eternal work. And God has a timetable and it's going to happen one day. Amen. The Bible says this in the book of Luke 21 and verse number 24. He said that there's those who are who've been led away captive. When you come down to verse number 8, how you talk about this eternal work. It is something that God has in His hand. This is something that God is going to do one day. It's going to be like unwrapping a present. He's going to pull the bow and praise God we're going home. Amen? We are going home. You do, you do know that because of Calvary, hallelujah, we are His child, right? And He's going to bring us home one day. It's an eternal work. And it's sealed in the Father. 
But he does give us some opportunity. When you talk about Jesus coming again, and you go over in the New Testament, you go in the Old Testament, God has given us some things to look for before that time comes. He says it in the book of Matthew. We can talk about it. There's wars, rumors of wars. Brother will hate brother. All these things that are going on in our world today. Earthquakes will be many. There, there's more earthquakes that goes on today than in the history of time itself. A matter of fact, they have become so regular, it's not even don't even hit the news like it used to. Y'all notice that? Matter of fact, I think they're more worried about Twitter than there are earthquakes. Y'all know what I mean? We've become a shallow society, by the way. Y'all know that, right? We need some help from Jesus, don't we? When you look at what is going on in our world, you see these scriptures. Jesus said, I want to let you know, these things are going to come to pass. He said, you just be ready. These things are coming to pass before. They are in preparation of that tribulation time. So we are walking through those things of the preparation of the tribulation time that's getting ready to take place. He said, I want to remind you, it's an eternal work of God. God has that time set uh, where it should be. And so uh, you find in verse number 8, that's when Daniel calls out and he said, and I heard, I heard these things, God. He said, I want to clear, understand, I want to know God. So he here's what Daniel's asking. God, would you just open up that book and just show me every little thing that's going to take place? You watch Daniel he's standing before God in his heart in that time of prayer. And he's calling upon the Lord. And he says it, matter, matter of fact, in verse number 8, he said, but I understood not. Then said I, oh my Lord. Uh, when you look up the word Lord, you understand in your Bible, uh, it is not all capitalized, just the first uh, letters capitalized, which that lets us know who he's talking about or to, talking to. That word Ananias, which means, uh, God, that you are my master. You are the one who is the controller. God, you are the one who is driving this ship. God, you know exactly every single thing that is going on right where we are. You are sovereign. Lord, you are the owner of it all. And I'm calling upon you. I'm looking to you, God. Why in the world would Daniel be so concerned? Number one, Daniel wanted deliverance for the people. Amen? Number two, Daniel's looking for the hope of the Lord coming. He knows he's coming. Here's what the Bible says. When you go all the way back in the book of Enoch, uh, I start in the book of Enoch, when you go back in the book of Genesis to Enoch himself, how many of you know what Enoch's message was? Anybody? It's found in the book of Jude. He said these words. The Bible says... Enoch was preaching the coming of the Lord. To be prepared, Jesus is coming. That's all the way back in the book of Genesis. And what's Daniel doing? Daniel's saying, God, where are you coming? Lord, I want to see you. I want you to deliver us. How about our lives? How much are we so involved in the world that we forget that Jesus is coming? Anybody? We get so involved. Well, we forget sometimes that he's just going to take us home one day. Daniel's heart was burning and desiring for that deliverance from God. And he said, God, I want you to show me. I want to know. Oh, and as you, as you understand in verse number 8, he said, Oh, Lord, what shall be the end of these things? God, what is going to happen? What are those details? And God began to say in verse number 9, he said, and he said, Oh, Daniel, go thy way, Daniel. He's not saying, Daniel, get out of my presence. He's saying, Daniel, you just keep doing what you're doing. You just keep being faithful. I'm coming. Do you know something? If we knew that Jesus, or if we knew the hour that He was coming, would it change what we do? We think it would, but really, would it? Because we know He's coming. We understand that we're going to give an account before God. We're going to let that change us, that one day we're going to be in His presence forever and ever. And so you watch Daniel as, as he is here in this everlasting hope from verse number 8 down through verse number 13. He gets all of this poured into him. He said, for the words are closed up and sealed to the end of time. Here's what he said. Look at verse number 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Here he is talking about the wise again. He said, here's what's going to happen. He said, those who are wise, those who are following God, he said, they're going to continue to follow God. They're going to get greater, and God's going to bless them. He said, but those who are doing evil, they're going to continue to get worse. How many of you believe today that evil is more open and worse than it was five years ago? He said, I want to let you know what's going to happen. 
He said, Daniel, you don't need to worry about the time. He said, you just need to keep doing what you're doing. You keep, you keep your foot on the gas. You keep going forward. You keep being faithful to, uh, being faithful and walking through. Here's what's going to happen. He said, I got it all under control. I, I, I want to let y'all know something in verse number 10. Let's just know God never stops working. He's not going to stop working. He is working in people's lives. He's working in this world. He is calling people to come to him. He said, there's going to be those who are going to be purified, tried. They're going to be white as snow. They're going to be presented as my children. He said, and there's those who who are going to walk into everlasting destruction. He said, oh, here's what is going on. He said, Here, here's the true end. God never stops. Here's what he said in Revelation 7 and verse number 14. He said, these are they which come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The wicked will be deceived by their sinfulness. Did you know today why people are so wicked? They cannot see that they're wicked. Sin blinds us amen they are blind to who they are and what is going on in their life he said but the wise they shall see and they shall expect when you come to verse number 11 and 12, it's the place that uh, this prophecy points to Israel becoming a nation. He said, I want to let you know something, Daniel. Uh, when this time is over, and he gives them a timetable, he said, uh, this nation, uh, they're, they're going to be delivered. Guess what? When that time that God gave Daniel in these two scriptures, in verse number 11 and verse number 12, when that time was finished on a real timeline, it was, it was in May of 1948. Wow. God said, by the way, Daniel, this is when this is going to happen. I'm going to take, I, I got everything under control, Daniel. You just keep praying and keep trusting and you just keep being who you need to be. Can I tell you something about that? I, I feel like God spoke to me through this time of studying in Daniel chapter number 12. Daniel says, to, uh, God says to us, there's, a, there's some things you, you can't understand, you're not going to understand yet. There's some things in life that may not work out the way you think they're going to work out. Amen. Just keep being, just keep trusting. Because God has a plan that's greater than our thoughts. And here's how he said it. He said it in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20. He said, I want to let you know something. He said, you can't think like what I've got planned for you. I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or even think according to the power that worketh in you. God said, I want to let you know something, Daniel. I got this. Look with me right quick at the last verse. He said, but go thou thy way till the end be. He said, For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. He said, Daniel, guess what? I got you and I got this. You just need to go rest in who I am. You need to trust in prayer. You need to trust what God is doing. He said, but just take that rest. I love, I love what he says when you go over in the, in the New Testament in the book of Titus. Uh, Titus chapter, uh, chapter 2 and verse number 13. He said, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, Daniel, you just go do what you're supposed to be doing. Get back. To be, in that, to be in that president who's leading. Get back to that one who is walking through this world with your head held high, pointed toward the Savior. He said, you go back to being that one that, lead, that is leading people where they need to go. He said, because I'm coming, I've got this, and praise God, you're safe. You're, we're going to see each other one day. I wanna, thank God we've got, we got a promise from God. Here's what he said. He said, I'm leaving, but whenever I leave and go to prepare you a place, I'm coming again. I never believe He's coming again. Amen. And I want to tell you, that's why Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Every one of us, He died for, in our place. He died for us to pay that sin debt of the whole entire world, of every sin. But thank God on the third day, He arose. Amen. And He promised us, He said, I want to let you know something. When, that, when He ascended back up into heaven, He said, I'm going to send you another comforter. He sent the Holy Spirit to walk with us, to be in us, to dwell in us, to lead us, to guide us, to empower us. And He said, I want to let you know something. That's an earnest. I've made a down payment into your life that I'm coming back to take you home. And so He says to Daniel, He said, Daniel, I've got this. He said, you take your rest. You, you be at peace in who God is and what God can do. And you keep on keeping on because I'm going to take you safely home. And one day, praise God, there's going to be an end of all things. God has it all in control. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word tonight. God, thank you for speaking to us tonight. God, as Daniel sought you and, and wanted to know, God, those things that were to come, God, you showed him, Lord, that those things, that some things that were to come. And God, in that, 
Lord, you just spoke to him that got to be at peace, to rest in who God is, and to rest in the fact of what you can do, and to live every day with the expectation that no matter where we are, no matter what's going on in our life, God, that you have it, and you'll carry us through. You'll lead us where we need to be. And God, help us to follow you in that. Father, I just want to praise you for all that you're doing in our lives right now. And I pray that your will be done in our lives together. And we also want to give you praise. The heads